Yo, what's up guys? My name is Sida Pedsermento from BSIT2105. So for today's vlog, I'm going to, to have a, sum, a summarized form for our net account for chapter 2. So, in our chapter 2, we have different types of operating systems. These are the shell, kernel, and the hardware. For the, shernet, for the shell, this allows the users to request specific tasks from the computer. This request can be made either to CLI or GUI interfaces. So, for the other operating systems, we have the kernel. So, in kernel, it communicates between the hardware and software of a, commun of a computer and, and computer and manages how hardware resources are used to meet software requirements. For, so lastly, for the hardware, so you all know this, these are the different types of uh, devices that are inside the computer, your devices. So hardware is the physical part of the computer including underlying electronics. So these are the parts of the electron of the operating system. So for our access method, there are three types. So these are the console. Secure, Shell, SSH, and the Telnet. So console, we can we can use this console with with or without uh, the use of internet. This is a physical management that provides out of band access to a Cisco device. So here you can configure without using internet. Uh, that. So for our secure shell SSH is a method for remotely establishing a secure CLI connection through a virtual interface over a network. So in secure shell SSH, in this you can, uh, this provides you security, uh, including password, password inscription, and many more. So in Telnet, it is a an insecure method of remotely establishing a CLI season session through a virtual interfaces over a network. So that are the CLI access options. So for our terminal emulation programs, wait. The number of excellent terminal emulation programs available for connecting to communicating device either by serial connection over console port by SSH or Telnet connection. Some of these include Puty, TerraTerm, Secure CRT, OS X Terminal. So, in our primary commands, they are two types. These are the user exec mode and privilege exec mode. Uh, in the user exec mode, it has a limited capabilities but is useful for basic operations. It only, it only allows only limited amount of commands but does not allow that does not allow the execution of any commands that might change the configuration of the device. So for the other command mode, these are these are the prevalent exec mode. To execute the configuration command, you need to use the prevalent exec mode. The code for prevalent exec mode is config t. Uh, for the config t means uh, it allows you to uh, to have access to through a global configuration. So, in navigating between iOS modes, to, to move from user exec mode to privilege exec mode, use the enable command. Use the disable privilege exec mode command to return the user exec mode. To, to, move in, in or, and to move in or out in the global configuration, use the configuration terminal or as you call config, config T, as I mentioned a while ago. So, if you're going to return from the Exec mode from your privilege exec mode. Uh, you need to type exit exit for for the program to exit from the 
from back to your exec mode. So, and for the line command uh, or the line console, this allows you to um, to move from any sub configuration mode to privilege mode, enter end command or enter any command combination by control Z. So, the difference between control C and control Z was control C was then the program and control Z was the one uh, to go to the previous previous thing that you have done before you have executed it. For our iOS command syntax, we use the description for using the description command, is the description string. The argument is a string value provided by the user. So, it was provided by the user. So, the following examples of the conversion used to document the use of iOS command. So, for a ping IP ad or as we call the IP address, this command and the user defined agreement is the IP address of the destination device. For example, its ping is 10.10.10.5. So for a trace root IP address, the command is trace root and the user defined argument is the IP address and the destination of the device. For example, the trace root 192.168.254.254. So these are the examples for for ping and trace root. So in our CLI hotkeys and shortcut, we have the tabs complete the special command name entry, backspace, raise the character to the left of the cursor, control D, erase all the, the character of the cursor, control K, erase all the characters from the cursor to the end of the command line, control K, oh same, control D, erase all characters from the cursor to the end of the word, control X, erase all characters from the cursor back to the beginning of the command. At the more at the prompt, enter key displays the next line, space bar display the next screen, any key and the display string return to the privilege exec mode. So for our break keys, as I told you a while ago, for the control Z, control Z, in control Z, when in, in any configuration modes, add the configuration modes and return to privilege exec mode. Back to the, back to the command prompt. While well, control Z, when in any configuration mode and so configuration mode and remove and and return to the privilege exec mode. For so for our control shift six, all purpose break sequences to board then as look up trace routes and things. So for me, uh, while well, uh, um, as a as a student who use configure uh. This in a proc tracer for me control C uh, and so configuration mode by control Z and so configuration mode uh, to the last thing that you have done in your running in your running in exec mode. So in our host name, host name should have the start with the letter, contains no spaces, ends with the letter of the digit, use only letter digits and dashes be less than 64 characters in length. So, host names. So, why host names are very important in in configuring? So, in conf so host name was uh, it's very important because it allows you to capitalize a name as you do not rule. For me, host names was the uh, to have, you, to have a label for your pro, for the program that you are executing. So in configuring, we also have the securing device device access. <coughs> so securing device access is very important for the other users for not to be easily be accessed through by the other user. So in configuring, you can do this by by writing or by typing a command by enable secret password so by this command uh you're going to put the password for your for your user exec mode to run so 
in right you have in you have input the password so you may also have you may also use the service password encryption so in service password encryption this allows you to change the password into a numerical numbers example you have input uh, cisco so if you're going to have this in a encrypt password so the encrypt pass or the example of the output for the encrypt password should be three two one one two three so that's for that's just for an example that's not the real encrypt password for this call So for the IP address, the use of IP address is the primary means of enabling devices to locate one another and establish end-to-end -end communication on the internet. So devices requiring IP address are the computer, network printers, v VOIP iPhone, security cameras, smartphones, mobile, handheld devices. So if you're going to uh, have a practice in your packet tracer, uh, there are different kinds of mm, end devices uh, like those uh, router switch for for them to be connected. So uh, by the use of power tracer, you you have the power of the knowledge or the knowledge to uh, to locate each other each other end devices by the use of ping ping ad ping IP address. So that's all for the summary form of our chapter 2. So let's go, let's go for the next vlog. I'm going to have the summary form for our chapter 3. So that's all. Next time again. Bye.